Uh, good evening, everybody, and welcome to our uh, transition uh, webinar. Just a, a few little uh, pointers before we start. Can you please make sure that you mute yourself um, so that we don't get any interference as we are recording this evening's webinar, and we will send that out to parents. We'll put it on our YouTube channel and put it on the school website. Any questions that you do have, uh, if you can address them in the chat function, and at the end of this evening's session, we will look at those and try and answer as many of them as possible. And just a reminder, as I said earlier, the presentation will be on the website, the school's YouTube channel, and we'll also email it out to parents. We're just going to uh, share the screen now with the presentation that we're going to talk through this evening. Not quite our first webinar, but uh, it's our second one, but still the, the same principle applies. We'll fingers crossed that everything goes um, smoothly, but please don't worry if there's any other issues, you can always get in touch with the school as, as we go on. So really what we're going to talk about uh, today, I'll just have a, a very general introduction uh, about uh, this evening, then uh, Mr. Curtis um, and myself will talk about worries for modern parents and then finally I will talk through the homeschool partnership and we'll finish up by having a few questions if required. Um, first of all I'd just like to introduce the uh, Horncastle Education Trust. Uh, we're very fortunate that we are part of a local Education Trust, which comprises of four local schools, ourselves, Queggs, uh, Frithville and New York Primary Schools. And the aim of the, the Horncastle Education Trust really was to provide um, education that was locally based with local knowledge and to provide the best opportunities for everybody in the locality. Um, you'll hear more about that during your time at the school, um, but there's information there that we want to do. We want to inspire, excel and engage. And we can see we've got our mission statement there for you to have a look at. Um, benefits are huge in terms of having a very small local trust. Uh, it means that we can communicate quickly, we can work with one another and we're not traveling huge distances to people that don't know our area um, when we're talking about resources and so on. Right, just a reminder there about um, the opportunity to ask questions. Uh, if you could do it in the chat box, that would be great. Thank you. Okay, so this has been uh, an incredible year. Um, it's been a year like no other, but uh, I don't think any, any of us have experienced anything quite like this. Uh, first of all, we've got the fears over the coronavirus, uh, coupled with the stress of lockdown. Uh, Adding to that, the stress of homeschooling, and uh, Mr. Curtis and I have between us five children of primary school age, um, and we can certainly uh, support that third bullet point about the stresses of homeschooling. Uh, we have felt your pain every day. Um, but not only that, there are genuine worries over the missing education. And naturally, it's a transition like no other. You're making the move to big school and that is worrying enough as it is tonight is just an example of that lack of uh, normal transition and from a personal perspective i fully understand what you're going through as my daughter is making the step to the secondary school in our area as well so yes you you are absolutely right to be nervous absolutely right to be a little bit apprehensive but hopefully this evening and uh, what we have got planned will um, begin to ease those worries and enable your son or daughter to make that smooth transition to Banavalon School. Okay, so we are currently developing our plan for return um, and we're basing that on government advice and guidance. Um, we're aiming to have a couple of days year seven induction on the 3rd and 4th of September. Um, again, what we're looking at with these two 
uh, days. We're looking at how they're, they're going to be planned. Um, we're also looking at government guidance. We're basing it on the most up-to-date guidance that we have. There will be another round of that guidance coming out in the middle of August. So again, please look at your emails. I will send out the complete plan uh, so that parents can look at that and study it um, in much in quite a lot of detail. We had a very positive meeting with our heads of faculty and our subject leads last week, and they have already planned significantly for the time students have missed in year six. And not only that, but we've been in contact with the primary schools for further information as to the starting points for the children. Looking at it long term, I would say that our commitment to three year key stage four will minimise the impact on GCSE studies. So if you're coming in a little bit apprehensive about three or four years down the line, please don't worry. Uh, one of the benefits that we have found this year of doing and having a three year key stage four is that we have got that little bit extra time to complete our uh, programme of study. I'll now hand you over to uh, Mr Curtis, who's Deputy Head, and he is in charge of the, the pastoral side of things, but also the transition um, programme at the school. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen and students. Uh, I'm just going to go through uh, our school structures and a few of the um, school processes. Um, we'll start with the pastoral structure and our house system. We have three houses, Hurricane, Lancaster and Spitfire. Uh, Miss Hunter, Miss Spink and Miss Sheehan are all house leaders as well as teachers. Um, our tutor programme is, is quite unique. Uh, we have between 12 and 14, year seven uh, and year eight in one form. Um, and then the year eight and year nine have the similar um, numbers. We do that so that the year eights have just gone through the same process as what you guys are going to go through. And then they can buddy up and they can share their experiences um, and help each other out. Um, our tutor programme uh, covers a lot of our PSHE curriculum um, and uh, world events and, and cultural events as well. So in terms of who can help you as a student, uh, your form tutor, you'll see them every single morning. They are your first point of, point of contact. Your house leaders, as, as I just shared, the three house leaders, our student support team, um, we have three members of staff, Miss Marshall, Miss Gray, um, and, uh, and yesterday we, we appointed Mrs. Morton, who is uh, a familiar face to the school anyway, but she's, she's joining the student support team. Um, there are three non-teachers, they are um, purely just for student support, um, so if there's any issues, if any worries, any anxieties throughout your time during, during your day at, in, in school, then these people are there to, to help you. On top of that, we have our, our peer support. So we have our prefects, our current year 10s, who will be year, year 11 in September. They are, um, as we speak, applying to be prefects. Um, and we have our peer mentors, our anti-bullying ambassadors, and they are the students from all ages to help and support the students throughout, throughout the day if there's any, any issues. Those, uh, those leadership roles, especially the anti-bullying ambassadors, um, and, and the peer mentors are always open uh, for the year sevens when they start as well. So if you wanted to challenge yourself and become one of the school, uh, part of the school lead, student leadership team, then uh, please make sure you, you, you keep your eye out for those, uh, those adverts coming out. In terms of lines of communication for parents, uh, it's very, very similar. Um, form tutors, they're the, the first port of call uh, to speak with them, um, and then to the head of houses, then student support, and then the senior leadership, leadership team, with then Mr. Edgar um, at the end there. Um, we do try, we do try our best to, to, to communicate within 24, you know, sometimes 48 hours. What we, do, what we do say is that we want to make sure we've got all the information possible um, if, if, if you've got any, any concerns, we, we will look into those bits of information prior to getting back to you. Um, so the house card, this is what um, a, an example of the Spitfire house card, with it being in blue. 
Um, these are, are allocated to the students. This is, some, this is uh, um, an idea that the students came up with a few years ago um, to have on them uh, the, the positive side of things that they do when, when they're showing um, good respect and effort and being a role model and also the negative side. If they were to do something wrong, they would get a negative mark on the house card as well. This then relates and links to um, our, our rewards um, system, which is called ePraise, which I'll come, come on to in a minute. Our expectations is, uh, is based upon respect for all. It's respect for each other, it's respect for the staff, it's respect for the community that we live in, and it's respect for the environment that we're in as well. Uh, we are firm, but we're caring, very, very supportive. We want to make sure that, that the students you know, achieve really well um, and are really happy, independent learners. We do have a zero tolerance to bullying, bullying, but we are aware that, that children do fall out with each other and we work with them to make sure that, that uh, those situations are resolved and learn from, from what's happened. Um, we do believe that learning is a shared responsibility with ourselves, the students and you as parents. Um, our rewards and um, sanctions, uh, we have an e-praise uh, system which is, um, is all online, it's all online, it's a, uh, a logged in software system that the students log into, the staff log into and also the parents log into. You, parents and students, you have different accounts and parents you can, you can keep a, a check on what the, what the students are doing um, and it, it rewards the students for the, uh, the following five areas. Uh, challenge, attitude to learning, independence, um, cultural work, um, and outstanding homework. It also records homework. Um, all of our teaching staff record all, all the pieces of work that's been set, um, so parents, you can check that. We still have the student planners, and the students still need to write their homework in their planners, because we believe that that's a good life skill for them. Um, but all the homework is, is recorded on, on to ePraise for, for the students to check when they're at home. Um, and also for, for parents to, to keep that communication going with the school and the students. On top of the ePraise, um, the ePraise system works with a, a point system. Um, so when they get those, those points in those five, five areas, they can go to the ePraise shop that's online and they can purchase uh, equipment, sports equipment, um, art equipment, um, reading book vouchers, they can um, purchase hot chocolate from the canteen, lots of different things um, that, that are awarded based on the rewards that they get. We also then issue postcards, subject postcards, uh, effort postcards, certificates for specific things for, for participation in clubs and, and, and activities. Um, we have then other, other community awards and, and house awards, as well as the head teachers award, and we have another piece of software, uh, which is also an, an app, it's called Insight. Um, and this records if there is any negative behavior, the members of staff record that on our internal management system. And that's then live feed to, to you as parents. You can see that, I think it's within three minutes, you can actually see if anything's been recorded from a negative perspective. Extracurricular activities, we, there are a vast amounts of different activities that students can participate in. And these are just a, just a few, lots and lots of different sports clubs, science club, art club, craft, sign language, uh, great experience with Duke of Edinburgh, lots of expeditions and, and, and different activities with Duke of Edinburgh. Um, and if there's something that you're interested in that we're currently not doing, then let us know and we'll look to see if what we can uh, what we do. Our reward strip, sadly we have unable to do our reward strip this year, but uh, our annual reward strip is based on um, the students achieving an ATL of three and above um, throughout the academic year. That's an, an average from all of the data shops that we do across the year. Um, but they've not been in isolation not in terms of what we're currently in isolation, but in terms of the school sense. Um, a very strong attendance record, um, 
depending on, 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 on the current situation and how that impacts, impacts school attendance. Um, no more than two after school home extensions and a positive house point record, which links to the house card that I spoke about earlier. Our uniform. Um, hopefully you should have received an email regarding all of the details about our, our school uniform. It's all provided by Nationwide, which is in Spilsby. The, inf uh, the email does have lots of information about measuring guides and things like that and, and making sure that you can do, do your orders on, online. So each student has a flight path for every single subject. And normally we would use a system called Fisher Family Trust, which is a, a national program that collates lots of uh, data from, uh, from, from thousands and thousands of schools. Um, and that gives us um, aspirational targets uh, for our students. It's based on their um, Key Stage 2 results, which obviously we're not going to be in a position to use this year. Um, we will be looking at different forms of, um, of, of, of subject baseline testing, um, but that we'll do that later on in the year. Our, our first priority is making sure that they're, they're in happy, settled in, 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 in a learning routine. Um, this is what, what you would see in terms of your reports and information that's going to be sent to you. Um, on average, we, we look at three assessment data drops um, um, over the year. Um, and you would get this information based on, on, on each subject area. What we would like to do is that, that you as parents, if, if there are things that in the autumn term, it's, it's quite natural to the student not to be on target or above, okay? Because there might be some aspects of the curriculum that they haven't, haven't covered before in primary school. But if, you, if the below target was, was there in the spring and in the summer, you, we want you to be you know, holding us to account and raising that question, okay, what, what's going on? What, what do we need to be doing? So we can have that communication with you to making sure that your child is successful. Within the reports it's also shared, you also get information regarding uh, behavior and efforts and homework and attitudes. Key to our assessment will be your sons and daughters' attitude to learning. This is what we're going to be looking at for assessments over the over the next coming terms, especially with, with year sevens, based on and not being able to have the key stage two data. This is our attitude to learning um, grid. Um, we expect this is in the planner, so when the students do get the planners, they'll be able to come back and show you these. Um, we expect every student to be a three and the challenge is to be a four um, is to, to motivate and inspire them to, to achieve that four. The key dates, um, as, our, ours, as the, um, our plan progresses over the next few weeks, there will be more information about uh, returning to school. We are, we are set on, on having two transition days for year seven, all being well that that's going to that's going to um, happen on Thursday the 3rd and, and Friday the 4th September. These will be just two days just for year seven and um, the, the year 11 prefects will be will be attending as well to provide a bit more support but that's going to be two days just so that they get used to the, the building the space and the environment and, and just get used to being being in, in, a, in a different space. Um, other key dates Assessments in the first term, baseline information from, uh, from subjects, um, school photograph in September. This will initially just be for year seven. The, late, the other years will be later on in the year. October, you will have a review evening with your form tutors, a bit of a settling in evening, see how things have, go, have gone over the first term, get some information from, from subject teachers um, via, your, via the form tutor. In April, There'll be um, a parents' evening where you'll see all the subject areas. Um, the progress reports, as I said, you'll get three of those um, over, over the year. And then in June, we'll have our annual annual year seven exams for them to, uh, to complete. Okay, I will talk uh, briefly uh, about the, the learning support. Now, normally it would be Ms. Rutter, who is our Senko, uh, and she would speak uh, at this point. but. Uh, 
Um, this evening, you've just got myself and Mr. Curtis. So, um, very, very fortunate. We um, have currently 11 teaching assistants, uh, many of whom have subject specialisms. Um, and we are looking to recruit uh, further three tomorrow. Uh, we're very fortunate in having a, a specialist dyslexia teacher, uh, Mrs. Coulson, um, who will work with the, the core intervention students. And we have core intervention in both literacy and numeracy for students who struggle in those areas. So we, they are a separate timetable group um, who will access extra maths and English support. Um, not only that, but we have the, our social inclusion club, the NEST, which goes on every day at lunchtime to encourage uh, pupils who might find the, the sort of everyday uh, hurly burly of the, the playground and the school a little bit too much. Um, and there they can sit in with their friends and do board games, uh, confidence building activities and so on. Um, not only that, but we have uh, been awarded the Autism Awareness Aim for Links Award Gold Standard. So we are well, well versed in dealing with uh, students who uh, have autism. So again, there's a whole range of support in place uh, for students that may have uh, special needs. Okay. Now, um, we're just going to very, very briefly talk about one or two of the uh, worries that you might have as a, a modern parent. Um, normally, again, we would have a, a specialist speaker in at this time, but we are going to talk about this um, later on uh, during the school year. The quote you see there is not from a, a great social thinker or um, an educationalist. It's actually me. Uh, I'm very pleased that I'm not a teenager now, given um, the social media and the issues that they, they, they face with uh, the internet growing up. Uh, but as I've said, uh, my daughter is starting secondary school and despite having nearly 30 years of dealing with uh, teenagers, um, being a parent of a modern teenager scares the absolute life out of me. We're just going to talk very, very briefly now about um, some of the issues regarding social media. So I'll hand you back to Mr Curtis for that. Okay, um, it, it's, this is a question I usually ask the students when I go and visit the primary schools um, around about this time, is um, how many of them have got, have got mobile phones, and usually 90, 95% put their hand up to say yes. Um, and then ask how many of you use social media platforms, and, and again, the vast majority will put their hands up to say yes. It's, um, social media is, you know, it, it's part of the youngsters' lives, um, and it is it can be used really really positively it's a great tool when it's used appropriately um, what we try and look at for the students is to ensure that they are being responsible with it um, making sure that they're making the right choices making sure that they are are thinking before they press that send button thinking that okay would I share this 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 information this language with, with my parents with my grandparents and if the answer is no, then, then don't send it. Um, it's reiterating with them um, the fact that whatever they put out there, um, it, it never goes away. It's, it's always there. Um, a big selling point of, uh, of Snapchat is, is, is the fact that it disappears, but it doesn't. It is always there. It's stored in their servers. If, if um, other people need to get hold of it, you know, police and things like that, they, they, they can access it. It doesn't go away. Um, also, it's just informing the students of, of their, uh, of the legal restrictions and the legal, um, at the age limits. Um, all, the vast majority are 13 plus. Um, they often are, are, are a bit more. Um, and it's, it, it's tailored because of the, the, the level of responsibility that students have. And, a lot of a lot of people, a lot of the people that um, put these age restrictions on, are, they, they say below 13, they they don't have that emotional intelligence yet um, to make always the right choices. Um, so it's just making sure that the students are are aware of um, of the responsibilities. Um, we we are completely aware that the vast majority of them do have them when they're 11, 12. 
Um, but as I said, it's reiterating to make sure that they, they're using it appropriately. Uh, information for, for parents and for the students that if, if there is something online that, that, that somebody's shared that's, that you find is not, not, not appropriate, not, not nice, it's, it's, it's um, malicious or anything like that, then CEOPS is the, is the place to, to contact. Um, they deal with, with purely with online safety and, and you can uh, get to seek advice and, and report incidents through them. Think you know .co.uk is specifically for the students. Lots of information. We use a lot of that information in, in our case at huge lessons and online safety lessons. Um, and then also there is a, a separate tab for parents uh, for finding out any further information from a, um, a parental perspective. Um, we, we do share a lot via Twitter. Um, and you, you'll be aware as parents that um, apps and, and, and different platforms that are created weekly if not daily they change all the time and there's lots of information that, that comes out there's lots of things that they they tweak without telling you um so such as you know, snapchat a few years ago they had the um, the ghost um, um element to it where it actually tracked where you were so people could see um down to the street where you where 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 the, the phone was um, and it, the things like that, that a lot of the children don't actually know that these things are, are there active on their phone. Um, more information will, 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 be, um, will be delivered to the students over the year as well as parents. Um, and we do a lot, lot via, via tutor time. If you do want to look at some more information, there, we have got some more um, content on our website. So please have a look at, at, at those areas to give more, more guidance for parents. Okay, over to Mr. Edgar. Okay, I'd just like to talk very quickly about the, the home school partnership. Um, the best we have ever had it described is to describe it as a three-legged stool. There are three key elements, uh, the partnership between the school, the home and the student. And if one of those isn't working, then the whole thing falls down. Um, it really is important that we work together as a team and we communicate regularly with one another. As part of our deal, we will do the following. We will work hard to get to know your child. We'll encourage positive attitudes uh, and participation both in the, in the classroom and with the extracurricular uh, activities that we've got on offer at this school. We'll ensure lessons are planned for progress and challenge. Ensure you've got lines of communication with the school and we will keep you informed. As we've seen, we've got e-praise uh, for the regular communication between parents and home. Um, we've also got email, which we'll use, um, but also insight. We'll give you real-time information about your, student, your son or daughter. We'll set relevant and meaningful home study and hopefully over the course of the five years that they're at Van Avalon, they will develop independence and resilience. And that is crucial. That independence is very, very important. Sometimes they need to learn that if they haven't packed their bag and they haven't got their PE kit or if they haven't got their ingredients for food tech, then they have to suffer the, the repercussions for that. You shouldn't have to give up time to come away from work to deliver their ingredients or PE kit. Sometimes they have to learn a wee bit of a harsh lesson. Can you assist us by supporting the, the school with uniform standards, the home learning and attendance? And I'll come on to that in a moment or two. Please read the information from school and respond as appropriate. Can you encourage positive attitudes and participation for both in and out of the curriculum? Allow the students to develop that independence and resilience, as I mentioned earlier on. They have to grow up because the world that they're going into is a little bit tougher than it used to be. Communicate directly with the school, please. Contact us via the form tutor or via the lines of communication that Mr. Curtis talked about earlier. Please don't put anything up on social media expecting a response. I guarantee that will not happen. Please talk with us and work with us as part of this partnership. How can you help? Well, talk positively about school. Um, the school is very, very popular. We are oversubscribed in most years. 
and this is a good learning environment. Don't give them a get out, however well intentioned. I remember my dad saying to me, oh, don't worry, son, I was no good at maths either. And immediately by doing that, by saying something like that, however you supportive you think it is, you give the child a get out. And that was my get out. Have high but reasonable expectations. Help your child develop positive attitudes to learning and a strong work ethic. Because the five years will pass in a flash. And at 16, they'll be getting ready to go into the world of work where they'll need to show a strong work ethic. Or they're going to go to college or sixth form where they'll have to be a self-starter. The biggest thing I can say is to encourage your child to read for pleasure. Um, any books, anything that is of interest that challenges them and keeps them reading. Because the reforms to the GCSE have meant that reading is so, so important. And encourage a positive mindset. Now, what do I mean about that? Well, we'll come on and we'll talk about a positive mindset in a moment or two, but this is it. We want them to aim, aim high, aspire to be the best that they can. And if they do that, they will achieve great things. I want them to have pride and respect, pride in their appearance, pride in their work, pride in the school. I am very, very proud of the appearance of the students as they come into the school. Uniform is important. It sets those standards and it prepares them for that working life. If they get into these good habits, then they will uh, appear very, very confident and very, very smartly when it comes to sit, uh, sitting interviews and being interviewed by people who are unfortunately by and large my age and they've only got 10 seconds or so to make that first, first impression. I want them to respect themselves. I want them to really think positively about themselves, respect others and respect our environment. This school is in incredibly good condition given the age of the buildings and given the, the size of the site. And I want us to maintain that respect for the environment and respect for the staff that work here on the, the site team. Their job is not to tidy up after people. Their job is to maintain the site. So please respect our school environment. I really only ask three things. And these are the same three things that I ask of my own children. I want you to work hard, be polite, and try your best in everything that you do. And ultimately, to be the best that you can possibly be. If you do that, then we're gonna get on just fine. This very simple, very easy to understand mantra for life. And if you do that, you will do well in life. Attendance. Now, yes, this is going to be impacted by uh, the COVID-19 and coronavirus crisis but there is a strong link between regular attendance and achievement. And I'll come on and I'll talk about that in a moment or two. Our target for next year will be 96%. I just want to throw some statistics at you. Now, anywhere else, 90% is a good sign. But in the world of work and in the world of school, that's a day off a fortnight. That means that'll be four weeks off school per year. If you had that attendance record at work, you wouldn't be working there for very long. If we drop down to 80% attendance, that's one day a week, which equals one year missed by the end of year 11. And that's got to have an impact on your learning. Our standard position is not to grant holidays during term time. Please try and avoid that. And I know how difficult it is with the seasonal nature of employment in this area in agriculture and the leisure industry. But please, particularly in the GCSE years, try not to take holidays during term time. These are 2019 statistics. So our last year's year 11 uh, and their exam performance. And just look at the difference in the grades. If they were at or above 95%, they were a grade above target. And that's testament to the good quality teaching and learning that was going on in the, in the classroom. If that, attainment, uh, that attendance dropped below 90%, then they were one and a half grades below target on average. So that is a two and a half grade swing um, in grades. 
just by attendance. So please make sure that your son or daughter attend the school regularly. Where there are genuine medical issues, that's not a problem. Please, again, keep those lines of communication open and keep talking to us. And we can put in place plans to help and support. Plans to help and support that we wouldn't have thought possible six months ago, but we can now do a lot of online learning and we can provide that support. So please keep those lines of communication open. I talked earlier about a growth mindset. <clears throat> and I think it's really important to have that positive mindset and not to fall at the first hurdle, but get yourself picked back up again and get on with it and give it another go. If you're not making mistakes, then you're not doing anything. If you think about it, we learn best by making mistakes. We don't give up when we try to walk for the first time, even though we totter about and we hold on to the sofa, hold on to the coffee table, and then fall flat on our face. We get back up again. And that's the sort of mindset that I want to develop, that growth mindset, where you're challenged. Yes, it's not easy all the time, but nothing is. And if you develop that growth mindset, you develop that can-do attitude, you develop that resilience, that will help you deal with challenges as you go on later in life. If you've got a fixed mindset, you're just going to limit yourself. I want each and every child that comes through the door at Banavalam to give it a go, not be scared of making mistakes and have that growth mindset. Now, as a Scotsman, it pains me to uh, have to quote Gareth Southgate, but I think he's a very good example in the, the recent World Cup and, and the attention to detail and the, the fact that the penalties that have hung over the England team for so many years were addressed. And I like two of his quotes. We always have to believe what's possible in life and not be hindered by history or expectation. And then when something goes wrong in your life, it doesn't finish you and you should become braver, knowing that you've got to go for things in life and don't have any regrets because you didn't try to be as good as you might be. And I think um, his preparation, the growth mindset that he has allowed his England players to enjoy playing for England, which generations haven't done, is very, very positive. But also somebody who had a high profile uh, mistake or error, he has come back and he's become a better individual because of it. So don't think, I can't do it. Think, I can't do it yet. And I am going to try, and I am going to work, and I am going to get this problem solved. Because as I said, that will help you in later life. A really good book has been written by Matthew Syed, the, uh, the former international table tennis player, and now the Times sports and uh, leader uh, commentator. Uh, a really interesting book for, with full of strategies for improving that mindset. So have a read at that. It's, it's very, very positive. I've taken a lot out of it and it's very, very useful in dealing with uh, teenagers. From time to time, we will also suggest other books as well, which will, will hopefully help. Again, I keep coming back to this point. Do not be afraid to make mistakes. Thomas Edison in his workshop with his, his team of engineers and scientists and technicians, um, at one point he was, one of his guys came up to him and said, look, this is not working. We're just, we've tried 10,000 times. And he said, I've not failed. I've just found 10,000 ways that won't work. And of course he ends up developing um, the light bulb. He ends up developing the, uh, the, the stereo system or the music system that we that we're from, all familiar with. And another favorite of mine is Vince Lombardi, the famous American football coach, who says the only place success comes before work is in the dictionary. And I think, again, coming back to that, work hard, try your best, be polite, be respectful, and your time at Banavalam will be very successful indeed. And now, have we any questions? If you'd like to put some questions up on the, the chat, 
um, and we will try and answer these. You'll have to get a little bit closer, so apologies for that if we, you see uh, us getting closer to the screen. It's on there just a little bit higher. Yeah. Okay. Right. What we're going to do, we're, as I said, with the, the question is the government has spoken about retaining year groups and bubbles. Uh, how will this work in Banabana with mixed year group forms? Again, we're going to wait until we have that final uh, guidance. Uh, if we have to go into year group bubbles, then temporarily we will have um, every year, uh, year seven and eight, in the form groups, separate year form groups being taught in those groups all the way through. We will then have um, a specific area for the students to socialise in uh, on the school field um, and school facilities. So in a, they'll be taught in tutor groups and they'll have certain areas where they can go during the social time, but also they will have a, a set time for when they can pick up the lunch. That uh, will be at the start of lunch and they'll leave period four a little bit earlier so they can get through the lunch. The plans at the moment are for a, a restricted menu uh, with uh, two hot meal options, uh, one vegetarian uh, plus sandwiches that they can pick up and move on quickly and then eat outside. So hopefully that will that's answered that question. Again, with regards to the, the, uh, the face masks, um, the, we will await government guidance on that. As you can see in the last few days, um, that, has, that has changed. Um, so again, we will wait um, for government guidance and advice on the face masks. And again, we will com uh, communicate that with you. So again, please check your emails. Um, we will hopefully have you on ePraise over the holidays as well. Um, but we will be sending out information. So check the your emails, ePraise, the website for further information on that. Uh, and we'll let you know in due course. Um, why is lunch so late in the school day? Um, again, traditionally you would have, uh, I remember going to school, you would have two periods and break, two periods and lunch, and then another two periods and a break and so on. Um, we've found that um, students learn better in the morning before lunch um, and we've got a longer morning break so that students can if they, they want to have um, a sort of early lunch they can do that but it's to improve outcomes and to improve learning um, and to sort of shorten that afternoon period. If you do think of a question um, once we've once we've ended the webinar, um, the admin address is is just above on the on the chat. Um, uh, and Mr. Bateman is just about to put it again. So if you do think of one, that you think, oh, I wish I did ask that, then please please send a, a, the question via the email, and um, and we'll get back to you and respond to you via email instead. Right. Well, thank you very much indeed uh, for your time this evening. Thank you very much for your patience. Uh, apologies for the little hiccup midway through. Um, but um, as I said, we will be sending out further information on both the transition days and also with regards to the, the general plan uh, for the return to school in September. Thank you very much indeed again, and I look forward to seeing you in uh, September. Thank you.